Okay, here we go again. Some more uh, stones from the creek, plus a uh, something else I picked up from a different state entirely. So let's start off with one that we have gotten pretty familiar with at this point. It uh, looks like an arcosic or potassium feldspar rich sandstone. We've seen this one quite a bit from the creek. This one's pretty, this one's really dense. Sorry, my hands are in the way. This one is very dense. Actually quite glassy comparatively. I wondered if I'd ever get confused between a rhyolite and a uh, quartz aronite. Here's the other side. Again, these come from granite sources that are broken down. And then re-lithified. Very cool. Let's see how so much closer we can get. Yeah, very cool. All right. We will go next to, this is a quartz aronite. Yeah, mostly quartz grains. As you can tell, it's pretty obvious in this one. There were a few specks of grains that were more earth toned, I guess, if that's appropriate, you know, browns, a little bit darker, but you can hardly see those in this. But they're in there. But it looks like kind of the weathered surface of it. As compared to the more fresh inside. You know, a pretty mature sandstone. Move on to, I think I did one the other day that was a bit like this. This is like a piece of quartz. A piece of quartz, but it had some brassy materials in it. I think might be just grains of pyrite. But the rest of it is definitely predominantly like a weathered quartz. There's that. Okay, something pretty unique. For me, is this. You can actually see some crystal faces in this. Let's see if we can get that to there, yeah, right there. So it's some sort of feldspar in there. The rest of this seems to be quartz. That's definitely one that I noticed. You know, a cleavage plane for what could be a feldspar. Yeah, wow, really, really good there. Let's see how close we can get to that. Ooh. All right. Now this definitely had some sandstone grains to it. There were some pink grains, like inside this little cavity right there. There was definitely some feldspars, but there were definitely grain, grains of quartz and potassium feldspar. 
like some striated looking crystals. At one point, I think I found a, like a Galena grain, but it was a perfect, very small cube, which is always neat. So there's that, that one down there, that one crystal face down there is awesome. Yeah, so I'm not really 100% sure what this would be called overall. But, very interesting. Alright, next is a revisit. I'm going to show a small part of it first. So I got impatient. I said that I would crack this open at a different point because it is very grainy. Now I called this a pegmatite at one point, and I feel like I'm way off. So I thought I'd feel like I'm going to correct myself here. This, to me, seems like a very weathered schist. There's quartz, you know, the black minerals in here. Um, some kind of opaque white. I know, it could be some sort of feldspar. And then just kind of this weathered color, you know, the, that yellowish brown, orangish brown. Which could be a limonite, possibly. So I'm going to call this a schist because it breaks apart like that. And other materials that I know that break apart this easy are definitely schists. So I will in the future show a video of breaking this open more to use as a soil amendment. Here is another part of it. see the quartz that quartz the top left there doesn't really have a cleavage plane but it does shine a little at least not a perfect cleavage it's supposed to have conchoidal breaking and be glassy which it definitely is and it's definitely got like a grayish tone to it Let's see what the back side is yeah so the layering definitely got me to change my mind this to me is just a kind of a heavily, heavily weathered schist, which will be real fun to break up at some point. This is the larger portion of it. What's interesting is that the quartz kind of reminds me of how limestone kind of forms in the stratification or stratigraphy, I guess, if I'm using that right. Around here, you can see siltstones and limestone beds layered that have this rectangular bedding like that, that quartz right there. But yeah, real neat. Lots of grains in this. Very cool. This is what the outside looked like. This I found in a scotch pillow. This was not found in the creek. This was in the, you know, trunk portion of a scotch pine, Scott's pine tree that had fallen over. And I, I dug this out, washed it off. Thought it was some sort of granite pegmatite. And now it's definitely, I think, just a weathered schist. And, as a special guest, I was in Florida and found this. Now this is a type of sedimentary rock, very common down there. Coquina, Coquina, one of those. And it is a bunch of shell parts that have been cemented together. I have other stones from down there. I did not put acid on this, but every stone that I picked up from down there definitely has some sort of calcium carbonate 
because they all fizzed. And they all fizzed pretty seriously. I'm not great with seashells. I can identify cockles, whelks, some augers, and I feel like that's uh, scallops. And I feel like that's pretty much it. As for what these broken bits are, I'm really going to have no, no real clue. But I wanted to, knowing that I was going down to Florida, really wanted to find one of these. Now this was on the beach in Anastasia State Park, which was really, really neat. You could do tent camping and just down the road, a very nice beach. Mostly shells. This was really the only coquina that I saw down there. I think Anastasia is in St. Augustine. And I might be mis uh, remembering this, but I believe there's some sort of pamphlet or book on how coquina saved St. Augustine. Where we stayed, the restrooms for the campground were... There were blocks of this that made up the outside walls. So I thought that was really cool. I'm glad I got to bring one home. Okay, so uh, that's it for this one. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you uh, leave a comment, I'll try to get back to you. Hope you enjoyed. I'll keep up with these. The weather's getting nice. I may do a video on some tree and shrub identification at least for my area, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.